Technology has to do with essentially it's rejecting all the sunlight. Let's say you're outdoor. Uh, imagine 90 some odd degree heat here in New Mexico, right? Just intense solar radiation. You can walk outside and with this coating, you'll essentially block out all the sunlight while losing heat in, in the uh, mid-infrared region. So what, what that allows you to do is, without having to expend any electricity, your temperature will be lower than the ambient temperature. Really at the cost of a simple commercial paint, if you can cool down your building, that would be tremendous. And not only that, can you imagine using that coating for transportation, 18-wheelers, transporting something that has to be kept at, I don't know, freezing temperature, or um, even delivering medication to remote areas in a, in a uh, medication box that is actually can be kept cool without having to use dry ice or electricity, batteries and whatnot. One has to do with making your solar panels last longer. So typically vendors would want them to last maybe 15 to 20 years. We're trying to figure out a way to make them last maybe even double that so that the actual cost of electricity could, will come down and have a better chance of competing with fossil fuel generated electricity. And we're using this low cost, abundant, manufacturable, scalable carbon nanotubes that are what we call multi-walled. So when people say multi-walled, instead of having a single tube, you have multiple tubes that are concentric, rolled up and rolled up. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that they're cheaper than single tube carbon nanotubes. The silver lines that we're depositing is rather like Gumby, kind of stretchy. Mm -hmm. But then eventually, even if they're stretchy, if you stretch them, the body really long enough, it'll fail, break. And that's what we are trying to prevent by putting these conductive needles, carbon nanotubes, into the body. Mm -hmm. And so carbon nanotubes allow you to stretch out further, and even if your body breaks, these spaghetti strips, conductive needles actually connect the broken parts, pieces, and electrically bridge them. But the solar cells themselves actually crack over time. And when, they, when they crack, you lose power. And what we are trying to do is, by putting these conductive needles, that we can actually electri electrically bridge these cracks and be able to produce power, electricity, over a longer period. So that's what we are trying to do with the carbon nanotubes. Because when I first arrived here in 2000, so that's 18 years ago, at the time there were clearly two leaders who actually won these awards, by the way, uh, Stephen Brewick and Jeff Brinker, and also Gabriel Lopez. These were the inspirational leaders, intellectual leaders that I, that I looked up to. Um, and our department has even more, uh, you know, Abaya. We have Plamen. And these are the people who really, not only are they incredibly good scientists, they really translate their technologies to market. I really want to give credit to my students and postdocs who actually do bulk of the heavy lifting. They're the ones who really do the work and translate these technologies to, to market. Or right now it's a chief technologist that the company hired who is actually translating that to real, to, to market product. Um, so I wanna give them full credit, but I think the journey is exciting that all this hard work is finally paying off you are actually seeing your science making an impact in a tangible way and I th that, that brings me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm.